Awesome. Thanks, Rod. All right, if you're just joining us, we are just waiting a few moments to start Frequency Saw Youth Part B. If you haven't yet done so, please mute your microphone. Just helps eliminate some of the background noise while we're chatting. And take a minute and let us know what TV show have you been binging on during your extended stay at home. I need some good ones for my watch list. Oh, Tiger King, check on season or episode three. Ozark, that was a popular one in the last section for sure. Oh man, it's going. This is awesome. Gives me some ideas. I'm big on Homeland right now. If any Homeland watchers are out there, Homeland, oh, I see another one. And Schitt's Creek. I'm really into Schitt's Creek right now, but I've just finished it. So Tiger King, Tiger, oh, lots of Tiger King. Lots of Ozark. The Witcher, I love that one. Suits, that's a good choice. The Office, Lindsay, good choice. Mike and I started that from season one too, but we only got a few episodes in. Iron Fist, don't know that one either. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm just having some uh, microphone issues. Can you put in the checks if you can still hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Loud and clear on my end. Okay, good, just checking. It feels weird with these earbuds in because sometimes I can't tell. They're like noise canceling, right? So I'm like, okay, am I just talking to myself here or what? Reading instead, oh, good answer. I'm gonna do some of that. Is the question binge watching? Is that the question here, Sam? Yes, we're working on binge watching. I'm just gonna wrap it up here in a sec though. We're gonna finish. There's some, a lot of Ozark. A I'm hearing Ozark King. is good. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. Sneaky Pete, I've tried to get into now. That's a is that's good, eh? I've I've watched one episode, but you know, you watch one episode and then you're like, and I want a series, you know, something that's gonna last for a while. I'm telling you, Ben, Homeland. There's like a million seasons. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm into Homeland. I have one season left, Sam. I oh, have watched okay. everything. I'm waiting for the whole season to be done so I can just. Watch yeah. it one a day, every day. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> I love my me some Homeland. Yeah. Ozark's a good one, too. I like Ozark. All right. It's 2 o'clock. So if we are ready, Jen, Shantina, and Nicole, we're all here. Let's get rolling. Let me just get my slides up here. All right. So you welcome to Frequent, Frequent Seesaw Use Part B. So just a quick note, uh, yesterday's session part A revolved around um, home codes. So if you had much background information about the home codes piece, you might want to go and visit that session that is uh, archived on our blog, which there will be some links to that later and our new educator site. And um, so you can get some background knowledge on the home codes that you might have missed. And today's focus is going to be clearing up some things from part A yesterday and then focusing on activities and instructions and activities like and how they're changing in this online world. So lots of great content. My mind was blown after yesterday. So I'm looking forward to what Jen and Jen team are going to share today. All right, Nicole. Nicole, are you out there? Mm 
Okay, I don't hear Nicole. Want me to just play it? Yeah, let's just go ahead and play it. Maybe she's having some tech issues. Okay. I don't know. There's a lot of things that I don't understand that are popping up on the screen. So we might just have to That's say That's okay. It. You know what? Uh-huh. Let's just say it. Okay. We acknowledge that the land on which we are gathered is part of the traditional territory of the Chippewa, Odawa, Potawatomi, and Delray Nations. My voice isn't as nice as the video, but we'll take it. All right. And I'll just keep rolling until I hear back from Nicole. So our host today, same as yesterday, I'm happy you're here with us. Samantha Van Hoof, myself, an instructional coach. Nicole Hooper, Learning Commons coach. And our guest teachers, Shantima and Jen, who are sharing all this great content with us. And um, Nicole and I are gonna be man in the chat as best as possible. Shantima and Jen will work through the slides and some live demos. But I, I do caution you with the chat. If you can, hold off on some of your questions because I think a lot of the content and question or we'll answer some of your questions um so let them roll through some of it and then if you still have some things we will do our best to get to those as well okay and uh, we're just going to touch briefly on the six remote learning guidelines from yesterday just a quick run through of them kind of a refresher so number one asynchronous learning just really cognizant of the fact that our learners at home are not online in real time all day long so we want to give them learning opportunities that can be completed flexibly at various hours and times, whether when they have someone to sit with them or whether they have a device available at a certain time. Number two is pace. Create experiences for students to work at their own pace. I know working at home with my daughter right now, and this kind of connects to the, the next one, prioritize. It can take us a lot longer to work through things that are completed at home. She's distracted by a lot at home. So just really thinking about that and less is more, really focusing in on things that are really important and meaningful. Uh, availability, if you can set up some office hours, block out some time each day to be online or for phone calls. This will help you and your students juggle all of this. Number five, intentionality. Choose resources and activities that will boost learning, that are meaningful, that are not just time wasters. Uh, what are the items that still must be addressed this school year? And think about that as you're planning. And number six, familiar. Use the tools that you are currently using, like Seesaw or Google. Uh, introduce new tools slowly. Don't over want to overwhelm yourself or our families. And just based on our last session, um, S2, there was some talk around teachers trying to juggle Google and Seesaw. There is no requirement for you to be doing both. If you pick one that you feel comfortable with and go with that all right so the next slide is just um a snapshot of the upcoming sessions this week around seesaw support i know you've probably heard this but um if you've missed any they are all available for you in archive to go back to on our blog there's a link to the new educator website as well and if you're in this session and you start to feel that it's maybe a bit over your understanding that's totally okay you can go back to the S2 sessions and check those out as well. The next slide is just a list of the ongoing Google um, learning sessions. And uh, some of them are overlapping. So if you did want to hit up both, uh, the archive sessions are a great way to see those. So I think from there, I am going to give the floor to Jen and Jandima. Awesome, thanks, uh, Sam. So welcome everyone. I just want to first point out that uh, we're all lighting it up blue for autism awareness. Oh yeah, woo, woo. light it up blue. <laughs> um, so the first thing Shantima and I wanted to do was really um, just spend a quick few minutes and address some of the um, misconceptions um, from yesterday. Okay, so we're just gonna quick clear up some things. Oh, you go first. Um, I just wanted to talk to um, those educators that are now, like some of us educators are also parents. So we were discussing how as educators, we're kind of navigating the different ways we are now using Seesaw because we're using it as educators, we're using it as parents, but we're using it for our own kids as students. Um, 
However, even though there are three different purposes for Seesaw, there are two Seesaw apps. So if you go into the app store and you type in Seesaw, you're going to see these two pop up. So the Seesaw class, the one on the top, is the one you are currently using in the classroom. That is also the one that your students are using in the classroom, right? Because when you open up that app, you have the option to choose, I'm a teacher, I'm a student. Um, I think the confusion at the bottom as well with Seesaw Family, um, Seesaw Parent and Seesaw Family is the same thing. I think we all just kind of use it in different, when we're in different terms, but Seesaw Parent and Family is the exact same app Remember that the bottom app is the one where you will not have access to any activities. Um, so you can't really do much. It's basically for parents to see their child's journal. Um, Jen is going to talk to the importance of using home codes as opposed to your class QR code now. So we just wanna quickly clear that up too because there were a few people in chat yesterday um, and then a few questions after our session um, asking, why can I not just use the class code? Why can I not just send home the class code that I have in my classroom? The reason for that is because we need to protect our students and families' privacy. So the difference is if I send home that class code, even if you turn off, students can't see other people's work. Um, when I go to submit work, I can choose anybody off that list. So if one of my activities is take a picture of my family, I take a picture of my family and then maybe accidentally, maybe on purpose, um, I press somebody else's name. Now my family picture is in somebody else's home. So that's a problem. Um, another issue is as we're moving towards assessment um, in the coming weeks, if we're designing an activity and the response is all in text um, and I submit it again, maybe accidentally, maybe on purpose, just to be silly because kids can be silly sometimes. Um, I, as a teacher, don't really know whose work that was. I'm assuming that it was the person that submitted it. Maybe it wasn't. So then I'm not really assessing properly. So it is essential that you are using the home codes, not the class code that you use in your classroom. So we just wanted to talk about that real quick and clear that up uh, for everybody. So now we're going to move on to today's topic. So if you are in this session, um, there's kind of an understanding that you're a frequent user of activities already. You're designing your own activities. You're using the community library. Maybe you're copying and editing activities um, already. That's where you're at. Um, I'm going to walk through building an activity today and how it has changed for me as a teacher online now versus in the classroom. Um, the biggest thing that has changed for me is the instructions. And we want to spend some time talking about instructions and why they're going to be so important to your activities. Previously in the classroom, when I was making activities, straight up honest, I didn't really use a lot of instructions. It was like, here's the activity, and then I just held up the iPad or I showed, I projected it on my TV, and then I told them the instructions, obviously, like, because they were all with me. Now, that's not the case. So, I have to think about how I can give instructions in a really clear way for all of my students to understand because I know that I'm gonna have students that can't read my instructions. Maybe they're doing it on their own, right? So they can't read my instructions. I have ELL families that are gonna struggle with some English uh, language literacy skills there. Um, and I also have some families that are struggling with literacy skills. So how can I make this activity easy to understand, basically? Um, so we're going to walk through ways to do that. How I'm doing it is through using the seesaw icons, using emojis, because I am a huge proponent of emojis. I feel like they're the universal language. I said that yesterday. Um, they're great. Um, and then also using audio instructions and video instructions, if the activity calls for it. So I'll kind of walk you through um, a few ways that I'm doing that. So I'm going to go into um, building an activity. So the very first thing that I did was um, 
I created an activity. Here's my activity library. I created this activity right here called Meet My Stuffy. It was my very first one, and that's the one I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna write my title, Meet My Stuffy. And then I'm gonna use um, the little teddy bear emoji because as I said, emojis are my jam. Okay, then I get into the instructions. So what I wanted my kids to do was really just um, introduce me to a stuffy or a toy because um, I wanted my first activity going home to be pretty chill um, and they loved it. So I'm gonna say, please share your favorite stuffy or toy with me and tell me a little bit about it. Okay, so that's my instruction. Then I'm going to actually write the instructions. So I'm gonna say tap, colon, add, now. For those of you that are not familiar with Seesaw Shortcuts, you're probably wondering what I'm doing. Hold tight, you'll see in two seconds, okay? Then I'm gonna say, reply to the activity with, and this is really important too, we have to give flexibility in our answers because as we talked about yesterday, lots of different devices, so, I can't just say, send me a video. Some people don't have video capability. So we always have to be really flexible with our response choices. So I'm gonna say, whoops, I'm gonna say reply with photo. Now, when you are using shortcuts, which is what I'm doing, I like to use lots of space in between. Um, photo, video, or draw, right? Because a lot of our kids just use the draw function. Okay. And then I'm going to say, tell me. And these are the things I want them to tell me uh, its name, how they got it, and why it's special to you. And there's lots of different ways you can do this with emojis. Sometimes I use arrows, but I'm going to use this dot uh, and say, it's name. Here's my dot again. Where you got it. And then I think it's why it's why it's special. Why it's special. Okay. So now all of those colons that I was writing up here, it's really just seesaw code. I'm gonna add more things, but if I tap save. Now all of those icons pop up. So for those of you that are already using shortcuts, um, that's what those um, little icons are called. You're gonna go, yeah, Jen, I already knew that. For those of you that aren't, I probably just blew your mind. So I know that when I figured out how to do it myself, I was like, oh, that's how those people do it. Cause I was going on to the community all the time and then I would see all of these activities and they had all these icons on it. And I'm like, I have no idea how they're doing that. Are they getting it from a picture? Are they copy and pasting it? Like, what are they doing? Um, then I just Googled it obviously. And then I found the answer. So how do you get those things? Um, if you go on to the seesaw helps, sure. Um, just Google, they're right there, or you can just type in seesaw shortcut and they're all right there. So I have that printed and that's what helps me understand, uh, what all those things are. Okay. So that's how you can use those icons. I just printed. Once you get going, you figure out the ones the most, and then you just use those ones. Okay, so that's how I do that. I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna edit this because I'm not done. But you can see when you start to build this with, um, when you start to build activities and you're gonna use these shortcuts, um, you'll see why I put extra space kind of in here. I like it not to be all squished together, all the little pictures squished together. So I leave a little extra space. Okay, 
Jen, the draw is drawing. That's why I'm just getting a couple notes. That's why it didn't oh. pop up. It's oh, drawing. That's, that's, that's all. Good call. Some, see, I get going and then I'm like, hmm. Can I ask a quick question too about these shortcuts yeah. while we're on it? Yeah. Um, I just ha I saw a question in the chat. I don't want to get too chat heavy right now, but just uh, it's about the emojis. Yeah. Um, we said, how can we be sure that all students are able to see the emojis? I've used them before and some students cannot see them based on what device they're on. Have you run into yeah. something like that yet? Yeah, okay. it's true. It just shows up as an X. So okay. I live in a world where if they can see it, great. And if they can't, they can't. Awesome. Um, you okay. can also just use, um, if you want to, if you know you're use, and most of your kids are using like a, a laptop or something, you can use, you know, like the greater than, less than signs or dash or something yeah. like okay. that. Right. Cool. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an emoji, but when you're giving instructions, I feel like it's best, certainly in a primary audience. I don't know about um, older students or students that need chunking. I feel like it's better to, you know, have it, have it chunked out like that. That's why I use those emojis. So it's like one, two, three, or use yeah. dash, 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 whatever, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah. Okay? Thanks. Okay. So now that I have the text instructions, I feel like it's probably important to also add voice instructions in case I have families or students at home that can't read anything that I just wrote anyway. That will solve so, the problem too of people not being able to see the seesaw shortcuts anyways. They'll just get used to listening to the voice instruction, I find. Mm -hmm. So, well, and what you can do, what some, what some look like is you can also do this. Like you can type the word photo. And if like, if you know that most of your students are um, not gonna have that capability. Um, but I believe that this is part of the app itself. So this part would work. It would just be the emojis maybe that wouldn't be quite right. Right, so if I, you can do it like that as well. If you wanna add the text part. So some people add the text part, some people don't. You'll find your flow and what works for you. Some people say, click add response because most of their kids are using Chromebooks. I say tap because my kids are mostly, um, or my kids were more used to using iPads. You choose whatever works for you. And that's what I would say. Don't stress over the little things, figure out what works for you. So now that I have my text instructions, I would just add my voice instructions. Here comes my teacher voice, everybody. Hi boys and girls in grade two, welcome to your first activity called Meet My Stuffy. Um, what I'd like you to do is introduce me to a stuffy or a toy if you would like, and I'd like you to tell me its name, where you got it, and why it's important to you, okay? And you can respond um, using picture, a video, or you can just use draw and type me a message, whatever works for you. Great, thanks, I can't wait to meet them. And then I'm gonna check mark that. And then that's where my um, audio instructions are showing up. If I wanted to do um, an actual video of me modeling um, Meet My Stuffy, you know, where I go like, hi boys and girls, this is my stuffy, do all of that, I could do a video and then just attach it down here as um, a multimedia instruction. Then down here, I would just add my template, right? But most people in this group, right? You're here because we're frequent users. So you would know that you would just add the template. So the template um, for this one uh, was just draw. I just did draw and then I just did a title at the top that said meet my stuffy. And then I'm just going to save. So there is my activity. And if I do go to my library, you can see this was my, there's my real activity um, from my activity library. I am going to talk to you quickly just about um, a way to kind of hack this media response. And this is something that I uh, recently just learned in the past uh, week. Okay. So uh, Shantima and I, what we do is we do a daily read aloud every day. Um, we share the videos and you can see there's, you know, there's read aloud one, read aloud two, three. So what I was doing, I'll show you read aloud three. Um, what I was doing here was I had my instructions, right? I'm using my emojis there, tap, add response. They can use um, 
the text or the microphone to share their answer. And then this was the template that I added, which I thought was great, hunky dory. I haven't even told Shantima this, so this is new learning for her too. <laughs> um, but what I was finding um, was that I have a few kids that um, they can't read this, and I have an ELL family that was struggling to read this as well. So their responses um, were just a retail. So they were just telling me the story, um, which is great. You know, I just sort of gave them the like, and then I would say, um, great retail. I love all the details that you told me, um, even though they're not following these instructions. But I kind of had to reflect on that and go, well, the reason why they're not following my instructions is I don't think they can read what these are. So my hack to kind of get around that um, today was I, so here's today's read aloud. Um, and if I go into edit so you can see what the actual build looks like, I have my title up here. I have my instructions right there. I've added the audio instructions. It's basically just me saying, listen to the story and answer the questions. My multimedia becomes the story. So that's where I was kind of struggling because I was like, well, how do I add reading to this if this is my multimedia instruction? I didn't really know how to figure that part out. But then I realized if I went into my template um, and I just added a second page, that solved my problem. So what I did on page one is Okay, so I read the actual questions and then I said at the end, so those are the three questions, boys and girls, and please put your answer on page two. So my kids know how to navigate to page two and that's how I'm solving that problem uh, there. So if you do have an activity that you're building that has um, multimedia already attached to it, like it has a video um, of you giving instructions, um, but then you have a template down here that has text on it that your students maybe cannot read or families at home would struggle to read. Build that second page. Um, you can go in and you can, um, you know, make your instructions that first page and then build down from there. Okay, so I'm going to take a pause now um, and field some questions if you'd like. Uh, I just kind of, I've been kind of getting to as many questions as I can, but the first one is we just had like, I guess, an organizational piece. There was about yeah. creating folders and do you place them in folders? Um, can so you show us gonna, that real quick? So we're going to talk about organization actually tomorrow. Awesome. Um, okay. So tomorrow what we're going to do um, is, I'm just going to discard those changes. Tomorrow, what we're going to do is actually talk to you about how to use this um, library so that you can, uh, Lambton Kent has its own shared library and like each school has their own library. So if I tapped on P. McGibbon, you can see that Shantima and I have um, contributed to our school. We talked about working smarter, not harder. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow and then we'll talk about how to organize your um, activity library um, using um, those options down there. So. Save it for tomorrow. Perfect. And then we have some about recording the video uh, for the read aloud. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of earlier plugged that S2 session talked a lot about tool literacy and we dive into the tools. Um, yeah. But I'm assuming you use the video tool to create that or you use your photo and up your phone and upload it or? We use, uh, Shantima and I use Apple Clips. Okay. That's why it's super fancy schmancy. Okay. Um, yeah. So that was created in Apple Clips. It does not have to be that fancy schmancy. Um, it can just be you holding the book and reading it like this. Yeah, and that for that you would use the video tool. Yes. Yes. Okay. And it's fair. We only do that because that's what our kids are used to. Um, Jen and I do a read aloud together every day in the classroom, and our kids like we take pictures of our books and share them on our screen. So our kids are just used to it, and we just wanted that continuity for them. That's why we put it together in Apple Clips. And then there's that add a multimedia feature. Okay. And then we have more around like activities going automatically to the public school district. I think we're going to touch on that tomorrow when tomorrow. you look at the, yeah, yep. awesome. Okay. I think I covered them all question wise for now. 
So, uh, oh, how long can videos be? I think if you use the video tool, it's only five minutes, I believe. I honestly don't know the answer to that because I make most of mine in camera and then I upload. Okay, so. I'm pretty sure the video tool on Seesaw only allows it to be a max of five minutes. So if you need to get around that, then yeah, you might want to make it on yours and upload it or use Apple Clips or something. Yeah, my hack is yeah. always to drop things into Google Drive and then just sharing a link. Okay. Right, so I'll just create something using my camera attached to my iPad, like camera roll, and then put it into Google Drive and share the link. Yeah, and there's some questions about uh, clips. Oh, go ahead, Pam. So I've been playing around with the read aloud piece too, because I think it's such a like great way to connect with kids and things. Um, I thought I was going to use the video within Seesaw to do that. And like Sam said, I was concerned about time and also retakes and all that kind of thing. So I just explored like in between sessions today, read a story, but I actually read, just used my camera and read um, videotape myself reading it. But I did it in four like sections. So my, especially in junior books, it took me about 20 minutes to read the picture book in total, but I ended up breaking it up into like an introduction and then read a little bit and then said, tune in tomorrow for the second part. So I took that one story, you gave me four days of activities really. Mm -hmm. to pose through it so and then i think if i was going to post that then i would use that video as i click here to hear the story and all that That's piece great. so i think just it made me think about pacing and like how much time we need for kids to work on things and so it don't have to do it all in one big shot so I'm that's a great idea Pam. and i did some and i did some research about the uh, read aloud some people were asking about that I'll put in the chat um, what publishers have said about um, read aloud. So I think if you're so, reading the story within the. Can I jump good. in on that, Pam? Uh, so, hey, yeah. it's Ben. Uh, copyright is basically if we're in a closed environment, like your Seesaw classroom, you're good. <laughs> if you're posting that on yeah. YouTube, not so good. So keep it in your closed environment, mm -hmm. keep it kind of shared within your you know, teaching partners, and that's good. Publishers are just worried that people are going to be uh, broadcasting their works. Uh, for free over the internet. So as long as you're yeah. just doing that in your closed group, you're good. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. So just to sort of like refocus for a sec, um, what we wanted to focus on today is really you just reflecting on how you're giving your kids and families instructions. So making them really clear, um, using the icons, using those shortcuts, using emojis, or if you, they don't have access or don't, can't read the emojis, using dash or whatever you want. Um, making sure that you have audio instructions. If you're not comfortable with video instructions, that's okay, audio works. Um, and not forgetting this piece. And that was my key piece of learning um, and reflecting this week was, here I am thinking I'm doing all these wonderful things for my kids, giving them instructions here, Womp womp, I wasn't giving them instructions on the template. So make your template, um, that page one, read those instructions for those kiddos and those families, and then just duplicate that page for page two. Okay. So that's kind of my piece. And tomorrow um, I'll, t I'll show and talk about how to add things to libraries and how we can organize um our activities and feedback because feedback becomes probably um more important than it's ever been before even yeah. though it's always been important mr hazard uh it's going to <laughs> different, become, uh, different. Yeah. It, it's going to become important and yeah and different it's going to change um so now i'm just going to pass it over to shantima because she's going to spend some time talking about um, things to think about when we are designing our activities. So with my piece, again, I, we've been kind of noting all of the struggles that Jen and I have had. We've had our home code sent home for just over a week now. And these are just some of the things we're realizing and hopefully you again can learn from our mistakes. So um, the first thing we're realizing when building activities is less is more. So again, being cognizant of all of the different devices that kids are using, I find that most of my kids are using mom's phone 
So if we look at the activity on the left hand side there, that's just a community activity that I shared. And um, all of us have seen something like this, like your number of the day and you're doing these four things. But I know in the classroom when I've created an activity on my phone and sent it to them and they're used to using, you know, their, their bigger iPads or even an iPad mini, it looks different. So if you imagine a student trying to complete an activity like the one on the left on mom's phone, um, especially those with good motor skills, let alone issues with fine motor skills, that's going to be an issue. So my solution to that, if you look to the photo on the right, we have that option to add pages now with the Seesaw update. So I basically just took that same content and split it up into four pages. Right, so if you look up to the very right, page one, they're still printing and writing the number. Page two, they're still um, doing the dice. Page three, we still have the tens frames. And page four, they still have that adding and subtracting. So just being aware of the actual physical space they have to work with when you're creating your activities and using those pages. Um, the next one, so just giving students what they need, something you are already doing in your classroom. Um, I found though I had to reflect and be self-aware of that again. So trying to steer away from these blanket activities and hitting send all, when I know that in my classroom, I have kids with modified and accommodated needs. So here's um, an example for you. If I'm sending a language activity home, like the one on the right, I may create something like the one on the left and sending it to um, those modified students. So you know that you have the, instead of select all, you can choose whichever students you'd like to send it to. So just being aware that you still need to meet your students' needs, even though the learning has become online. And that might not necessarily mean you're working on the same strand or content, right? My one student might really need to work on making 10 and that's where I'm gonna stay with that them as opposed to multiplication with some of my other students. So just making activities to their students needs what you're already doing in your classroom anyways. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about was templates and oh sorry flexible responses. So this is something Jen had already talked about but if you can go to the next one Jen here's her activity on the left hand side and if you look at the right hand side if she's looking at her responses Jen had actually received seven responses. We see six here, and I know this has happened in class. Some of this, one of her students actually responded through a video in his journal instead of hitting add to the activity, and that's okay, right? So we're, we might get some drawing and some video, and you may have wished they used a certain tool and they didn't. That's okay. I've needed to really remind myself, what is my objective of this activity? What content am I trying to assess here? And realizing that any tool is okay. Right, and then we see one even that says draw with no picture and that student had a laptop without a camera. But still, is that content there? Did they use another tool that worked? Um, and templates with open activity. So here's the template from our read aloud that we've used. Um, and just connecting with the last one too, remembering that you can hit click and edit on an activity. Right, so you can use an activity from the past instead of recreating this every time. So Jenna and I did not just go in and retype these three questions for every single daily read aloud. We would just go back to our activity library and then hit those three dots on the bottom right. And there's a copy edit activity feature that keeps your, yep, yeah, thanks, that keeps your actual activity from the past, makes a copy of it, and then you can just re-edit it. So I just changed my title. So she just added that number um, and then you can just yep, add, take out the multimedia and add the multimedia you want. So make sure you're not overloading yourself and recreating the same thing over and over, right? And that's something we'll get into tomorrow where you can share those activities and you're not just recreating the same thing multiple times. So here are two different responses she had from students um, and some of them typed them, some of them are sentences. There are lots of text boxes and colors all over the place, but what is our objective? What content are we trying to assess? And that's what I just kind of keep telling myself as I'm fielding all of these responses that come in. And I just want to say mm -hmm. props to this kid because she did problem in red and solution mm -hmm. in green. <laughs> Good for her. Quite organized. Yeah. 
Um, and the last one I'm just going to talk about, uh, like a seesaw hack, I guess, that Jen and I discovered yesterday. Um, I'm not sure what the notification settings are that parents get, but whenever we post a new activity, we kind of use their feed, their student journal, as a notification. So whenever we put in an activity or we want them to see something new, here's a screenshot of a message that, that Jen had actually posted to the student journal, right? So we would screenshot the activities, write a little note using the draw tool to saying like, hey, our first two activities are posted, check them out. We find that parents are always getting a notification when something's added to their journal. So we would just tag all students in those notifications and then they could go on and check the activities. And it seems to have worked for us. All right. Now we can, uh, Sam, if there are any questions for us. Yes. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm typing like a mad person okay. right now. So <laughs> <laughs> Ben's supposed to be helping me, but he's not pulling his uh, weight at all. <laughs> I'm not um, as smart as you, Sam. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just not there. I'm pretending. Okay. So, um, I've got, let me backtrack a bit here. I've got a few going on. Uh, okay, here's the last one that just came in. Do you provide feedback for all the activities that you send to students? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, I've got, uh, we had another question about if people are able to access, I'm just gonna say this out loud in case you didn't miss, in case others didn't see the chat. Are we able to access other activities from other people in our school and district? Uh, in our board, I said yes. We will touch on that in tomorrow's session. Tomorrow, yep. Yep. Um, I've got. Uh, this yes. might Okay. <laughs> yeah, this one might be a good one since Ben's here. You talk about assessing. What if we don't get all parents to sign up with home codes? Uh, I don't know where to go from there. Ben, what do you think? So I think it's important that, uh, so assessing is there's different ways that people may interact with us. Important to kind of keep record of how they are, how we're trying to reach out and that the times that we've tried, like we may try multiple times, uh, are we've kind of continued to talk about a thing about us parenting parents. That's not really our, our role, but what we are able to do is provide that within our professional responsibilities and then log that we've done that over time. Great thing about Seesaw, these digital tools, is that it does track that we've done those type of things, just maybe without a lot of response. Perfect, okay. Uh, earlier in the session, I think it might be Lisa Hendricks, um, she said, Jen, is that a screen that we can get or have you just made that screen with all the students in view for this presentation? I'm not, I asked for a bit of clarification. I'm not totally sure uh, what screen she's talking about. Maybe the one with all the kids' names so you can see who's signed on is what I'm thinking. Is it perhaps? Lizanne? Lizanne Hendricks asking that? Oh, oh yes. yeah. Sorry. Where you show all the responses, Jen, like when you click the response button under activity, that's what they're looking for. Okay. It's a weird because it's like a gray bar, right? Yeah, okay. so again, my demo class, right, to protect my, uh, my parents. Um, but if I go to my activity that I've assigned, um, oh, right, I can't really do it. Okay, I got to go to my real class. Okay, so real class, here I am. Um, here's my activities that I've assigned. So we'll go to meet my stuffy. When I'm at meet my stuffy, you can see down here at the bottom, it says seven responses, one waiting for approval, 13 not responded. So if I tap on that and I scroll, that's where I can see all of their responses. Oh, yay. Sorry, I just have a teacher moment. Willow's attached. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you remember from yesterday, um, I said um, a recommendation before you send your home codes home, but you can certainly do it now was to create an activity called Seesaw Remote Learning, I'm Connected. Because a lot of teachers are saying, well, I sent them home, I have no idea if they're connected or not. That's why I created this activity first, and technically this was the very first activity that I sent home, um, because all I want them to do is draw me a picture to show me that they're connected. So I know that I have um, kids, I have this many kids connected, okay? I think so that's my quick go to. Okay. Yep, and I just want to clarify, if you go back to the gray bar, Jen, before this, it doesn't look like a button, right? You have to actually click on the gray piece beside yeah. the add response. That's, yeah, I think that was the confusion there. You have to like tap on that. Yeah. yeah. It's active. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, I have one more request and then we will also um, hang on at the end if anybody had anything outstanding they want to address. 
Absolutely. I've had a few requests throughout the um, presentation for you to show your example of a read aloud. Do you mind sharing what that looks like so people can get sure. an idea? Okay. I know okay. in S the S2 sessions, people really appreciated just seeing ideas of things that could be done. So, Sure. So this was the very first one we sent home. Oh, I don't have any sound, Jen. Can you turn up the volume, Jen? Yeah. I don't know how to do that from my I iPad. <laughs> I think on the um, Zoom screen, there's a spot that says share audio, I believe. Um, Usually that's when you start sharing your uh, screen. There's a checkbox, so that may not have been checked. Okay. Does it? Okay. Can see. you unshare and oh, share yeah. again? There we go. I okay. Share. Well, if it says share computer sound, do you think that? Yes, that's it. My iPad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a real thing. It's a real thing. Look at us <laughs> learning tools on the fly. <laughs> We're fingers okay. crossed. Um, yes. You're going to hear a story so. from either yep. me or Mizzo. And we're going to start it just like we normally do with uh, what do you see? So I'm going to show you a picture from our story and you're going to tell me or mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or brother and sister or whoever you're with, what do you see? Okay, boys and girls, here's your picture. I know immediately you're going to say, I see narwhal, but what else do you see in this picture? So we've been reading the narwhal graphic novel series. <laughs> So that's Next, I want you to tell me what do you think is happening in this picture? So this is regular for our kids. We always start off with a what do you see and what do you think? Okay. That's our entry point, Good job. so that's why we did that. Did you say things like water, waves, rock, star, things like that? I'm sure you did. So yes, our story is from Narwhal Super, Narwhal, and Jelly Jolt. And this is actually the second story. Uh, we read the first one, and this is the second story called Narwhal, You're a Superstar. Narwhal, You're a Superstar. So at this point in time, it's just a, a picture of every What's single up? page, and then Shanty and I read me. over top of it. I'd like to be up there in the sky, a real star. Sounds. Okay, is that great? That's great. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> if I could get Let's a make that one go viral. That, yeah, that'd be yeah. great. If you could just and, send that home for me. Yeah, and then we always end it. You know, we always be friends. Say, okay, you enjoyed. Bye it. for now. And then we just have a quick have a great day from us and our picture, so that they get to see us every day. So that's awesome. kind of the vibe, mm -hmm. and they all look awesome. like that every day. Okay. That's great. So I'll say now we're, we've reached the end. I'm very confident people were able to take something from that. That was so great, Jen and Chantima. Um, we will hang around at the end if you want to um, pose some questions in the chat. My only request would be if you have some questions, maybe hang on a moment because everyone's going to kind of write bye, thanks, see you later. And Wait, then stick around. We want to do lost. something first, Sam. Yeah. Hold up. We need to oh, do yeah. our th thing now. It's our new way, right? It's our new thing. And we need to talk way. about what we're going to see tomorrow. We're not done yet, Ben. Yeah. So no, let's, okay. uh, yeah, okay. stick around. We got some surprises here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay. So uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about feedback, My sharing bad, to the school and district library, which I think is a big one people are looking for. And yep. then the idea around organizing activities, which was touched on a bit today and will be talked about more tomorrow. Um, so big thanks, adios. There's a picture of Nicole there. I'm thinking her internet might be, uh, took her for a loop. So she didn't join us today, but she was definitely here in spirit. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us. We are going to show this I here at the here, end. Sam. This is where you can access Oh, you're here. Hi. Just before, I, I have been here just listening. before participants go, can we invite folks to turn their cameras yes. on? You so uh, want to see who's been in the meeting with you. So you go up to uh, yes, the right-hand corner this. of the person view and so change that to the gallery view. You should be able to see a few dozen people show up. And you can wave to one another and say, hey, thanks for joining in. So just stop sharing our screen, whoever's sharing their screen. I think that's Jen. Jen's sharing her screen. <laughs> 
So we can stop that. Then we're going to see everybody who's here, which is really a cool. Couple actually, pages you can slide over. Really Rod, cool. can you explain to me again? On Holy cow! There's everybody. Yeah, in, in the top right corner, uh, you Got can it. see a little waffle. Click okay. on that. That's awesome. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Hey, and Shelby. You can swipe over to the right, yeah, ben, and you? you can see Good. more pages. Wow, cool. look at that. Oh, somebody's sharing their screen by accident. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, Who's sharing? Can share. Share. Continue. Stop share. There. Stop share. There. Right. Beautiful. Look at that. Lauren's there. Hey, Lauren. Awesome. How's it going? Julie helps. I know you, <laughs> Julie that? helps. Ooh, I think I see a whole bunch of people. Thanks for joining us today. Everyone. Kelly. So Thanks everybody, everybody for joining in. Kelly. Uh, we'll leave uh, the, the meeting running. running, running but I'm going to stop recording. recording. Uh, if, you if you have, have further, further questions, questions, you want to chat for a minute. We have a few minutes left. Big big yes, and everybody. I want to put up our um, I want to put up our feedback everybody. screen. Very I'd love to put up our feedback screen. Um, Jen, can you pop that feedback screen up for us? That'd be great. If just just send us a note if you can follow the QR code or click the link just so we know what you like, what you didn't like. This will help us improve our further, further um, sessions as well. Okay. And then my screen's all weird. There we go. Well done. Awesome. So there it is. So if you did want to hang on for more questions, now's the time. Let everyone kind of part and say their goodbyes and then um, we can look at the chat and see what's going on. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for that grid view. That's so cool.